All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in today. So, oh man, so here's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be going over the top five ways or the top five reasons, causes, cures to irritable bowel. Uh, this is going to be an important one. Again, it's near and dear to my heart because I dealt with irritable bowel uh, for a little while. Lowered my testosterone. I had mold toxicity. I had a couple other things that kind of stacked the, the decks against me. And so I'm going to basically share tips and tricks that you can actually implement starting today. Uh, as well as going into the holidays, different things that you should avoid, uh, alcohol included, if you're worried about dealing with symptoms of irritable bowel. So... Why is this important? Irritable bowel affects about 60 million people in the United States. That's a lot. It's almost about 20% of the population. And every single year, this number, this statistic, keeps getting worse. Not a good track record. Not only that, but I was doing some basic research. And what I found is that not only is or are the medical doctors not uh, serving us properly for fixing the problem but we actually pay more and more and more every single year after the diagnosis so not only is it initially expensive and uh, not just financially but also uh, socially okay emotionally because irritable bowel, remember, your your gut is your second brain. It releases a lot of feel-good hormones. A lot of serotonin is produced in the gut. Uh, your thyroid hormones are converted in the gut there, too. There's a lot of things that have to do with that gut mucosa, with that gut health. So when we get diagnosed with irritable bowel, it's a very expensive disease. Even if insurance covers some of your medications, it's still expensive. Not only that, but they tell you that there is no cure for your irritable bowel, which means you're stuck on medications for the rest of your life. Now, if you're lucky, right out of the gates, they're not going to give you an immunosuppressant. That's if you're lucky. But more often than not, they're going to say that you have an overactive immune system. They're going to go after and lower your immune system, give you an immunosuppressant, which then allows you to develop further infections. So your actual cause of irritable bowel could be because you have a hidden gut infection. It could be that you have a parasite. It could be that you have bacterial or yeast overgrowth. And so if you're getting put on an immunosuppressant, what's that going to do? It's going to weaken your immune system. It's going to weaken our defenses to be able to defend against further infection, as well as the ones that we have internally. So, I know a lot of times this can be a stressful topic. I'm going to make this really short, sweet, simple for you guys to be able to follow. All right? So, the number one thing that I want to talk about here is seriously, guys, we got to get to the bottom of this stuff because not only is it emotionally taxing for the person who has it, but as a relationship, again, trust me, if you have to be close to a bathroom, it makes it very difficult for you to be able to enjoy life. Very, very difficult. You're in a car, you got to pull over, boom, there goes your road trip. So you're not going to enjoy them anymore. All right, guys tend to get irritable when we have to have irritable bowel <laughs> problems. It's just maybe that's why they call it irritable bowel, just because it also makes you irritable. But what we're spending in medical care for irritable bowel is about $30 billion across the country a year. $30 billion. It's a huge, huge, huge burden financially for people. Okay, and obviously people aren't paying $30 billion, but the, the, the culmination of everybody kind of chipping in together more or less, that's what they're paying in health costs throughout the year. And it just keeps getting worse. And so the reason is, and you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know this, the reason is because they're not finding the cause, they're treating the symptom. Right? And that's where medical doctors fail 99.9% .9 of the time, is they're constantly treating a cause, not, I'm sorry, they're... Uh, they're constantly treating a symptom. They're not treating a cause. Functional medicine doctors, we treat the cause. And we're going to go over why that's important here. So if we think about that, right? think about why it's important to find the cause. And so I'll use a garden as an example. So say we have a garden or say we have grass in the backyard. And when we're dealing with the grass, we have 
um, we'll say we have some weeds that are starting to grow, or maybe the, the grass, we'll start with that. The grass is starting to die a little bit, starting to brown, and the soil is getting a little bit rough, and all of a sudden weeds start growing, okay? And it starts taking over your nice green grass, and you don't have nice green grass anymore. You have dry spots, you have bare spots, you've got just gross looking grass. So a medical doctor would come in and say, you have weeds, we need to give you weed killer. Spray the weed killer on the grass, right? And then move on. Well, if we just do that, what's going to happen? Okay, what's going to happen is we're still going to have the environment that brought us weeds to begin with. And in fact, you just poisoned the environment even more, which means in a little bit, you're going to have even more weeds than you started with. Okay, think of that as drugs. Now, let's say, all right, somebody's fed up. They're like, enough's enough. I'm tired of dealing with these weeds. So what are we going to do? We're going to take a lawnmower. We're going to drop the deck down, and we're going to scalp the grass, right? We're going to just, just rip it out raw, okay? What's that going to do? All right, that's going to cause more death and destruction to the area. Did we get rid of the weeds for right now? Sure. But... It's going to cause death and destruction to the area and what's going to grow again more weeds okay let's take it another step further let's say we're fancy we say there's weeds there so what are we going to do we're going to rip up the ground okay we're going to rip it up and we're going to take a piece of sod beautifully green grass and just pop it down okay and like a little three by two square or square three by two sheet okay toss that in there What's going to happen? It might start to take root for a little while, but eventually that toxic soil is going to ruin the sod. The sod won't grow. The whole time you're scratching your head, you're like, why is this happening? How, how, how come weeds keep coming time and time again? This needs to stop. Well, it's because you never figured out the cause of why the weeds were growing to begin with, why the grass was dying to begin with. So that's why I exhaust all options with my patients is I'm constantly trying to figure out what is it, what is the one, two, or maybe three causes as to why you're dealing with the symptom that you are. And that's what makes it very unique and different compared to any other office that you'll be in. Any other office, I can guarantee it. That's why we get results. We're not ever going to stop. So I'll stop tooting my own horn here for a second, but let's talk about the number one thing, okay? Going into the holidays, let's talk about this guy over here. Boop. Stress, right? Stress, the number one thing that I would say when we're talking about irritable bowel. Why is this important? Again, going into the holidays, we feel stress. Really, I mean, this whole time, this whole year, people have felt stress. And so, how does this play into irritable bowel? Let's just break it down real simple. So, if we have irritable bowel, okay. We're stressed, what that is going to do is cause us to go into fight or flight mode, which means we're pulling all of the digestive function out, all the blood, all the function out from our digestive organs out into our muscles so we're able to make a move at a second's glance, right? So when we have all of that function going away from the digestive tract, do you think your digestive tract can function even close to 100%? Heck no, right? So what do we need to do? We need to assess it for what it is. We need to calm down the stress, calm down those sympathetics, calm down that fight or flight, and get you into that parasympathetic, which is your rest and digest. So it's really important to understand this, guys, that you have to have the proper analysis for your sympathetic nervous system, your adrenal glands, because the more stressed out you are, the more it's going to cause damage. Now, over time, that's just the initial effect. Right over time, you'll get into a condition called hypochlorhydria. All right, so hypochlorhydria means that you have a decrease in your stomach acid. All right, the concentration of your stomach acid, not pH, your concentration drops down. And when that happens, what you're going to do is have a decreased ability to break down foods, so you won't be able to recover as quickly, and then you'll have more risk for infections, more risk for inflammation which is going to cause more risk for irritable bowel. So we need to have strategies to combat that stress. 
Now this could be something, these are just easy tips you can take notes on. But if you want easy tips, number one is avoid toxic people in your life. That's a phenomenal first tip that I can give you. Cut them out. If they do not breathe life into you, then they don't serve, serve a purpose in your life. Maybe in a past season when you were miserable, maybe they served a purpose. But when you're going towards health and well-being, you don't need any lead weights hanging off your feet as you're trying to move forward. Otherwise, you're not going to get there. They're just going to keep pulling you back. Okay? So that's first and foremost. Cut out the toxic people. All right? The other thing is you can do simple things to reset the sympathetics. You can do meditation. You can do some prayer time. You can get out and walk. You can exercise a little bit. Okay? Get proper sleep. Which kind of brings me into number two. Sleep. Very easy, right? Sleep is going to cause more inflammation or lack of sleep is going to cause more inflammation, more stress. You're going to crave the crappy foods because there's uh, certain morphine-like compounds that are in terrible food and you're just going to stay in that constant state of inflammation. You're just going to keep getting more and more sick. So sleep, you want to be asleep by 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. I don't care if you say I get a solid 10 hours of sleep and you're starting at 2 in the morning. You're not having proper sleep. You need to be in bed by 9, 30, 10 o'clock to match your normal rhythms for your cortisol throughout the day. If you don't, you're going to push your cortisol up too high. You're going to have anxiety before bed. You won't be able to shut down your mind. You'll have racing thoughts and your sleep quality will be terrible. Be absolutely terrible. You won't hit that deep REM sleep. So when you wake up in the morning, you're going to feel exhausted. Then you're going to suck down 15 pounds of coffee, which is going to tax your adrenal glands even more. You're going to drink that all the way through the day. You're going to keep drinking caffeine too far into the evening. And then your cortisol is going to be high again. And then you start the same routine all over again. So sleep. Be in bed by 9, 30, 10 o'clock. So that way you can get a proper night's sleep. If you're not at 9, 30, 10 o'clock or even close, if you are going to bed at midnight, 1 o'clock, the rule of thumb is to rewind when you go to sleep by a half hour about every two weeks. Okay, so if you're going to bed right now at midnight, start 11.30, give it two weeks, go to 11, give it two weeks, 10.30, two weeks, 10, two weeks, 9.30, two weeks, right? slowly do it otherwise if you're going to bed at midnight and you try tonight to go to bed at 9 30 you're just going to be kicking tossing turning and your anxiety is going to be through the roof because you're going to feel your cortisol keeping you awake okay so know that so sleep is going to be the number two thing that i wanted to talk about okay number three is going to be diet diet it's huge stop eating crap food if you have irritable bowel and I see you in a drive through line at McDonald's, I will not feel bad for you at all. You are doing this to yourself. Remember, about 90-95% of diseases out there are lifestyle-based diseases, which means you're freaking preventable if you stop eating shit, okay? If you start taking care of yourself and start investing in yourself, your body will invest back into you. You'll be able to do things that you want to set your mind to. And you can't use the excuse that things are too expensive anymore because it, honestly, you either pay for it up front, which might seem like a lot at first, or you pay for it further down the line when you have thousands and thousands of dollars in medical debt because you developed irritable bowel. And remember, irritable bowel can turn into irritable bowel disease, can turn into cancers. So it's up to you what you want to do. Invest now, and your health will thank you later. Not only that, but it's not that expensive anymore. In comparison, obviously there's not organic McDonald's out there, so you can't just do fast food, but you shouldn't be eating on the run anyways because you need to have your body be in rest and digest mode. You can't be stressed out. You can't be chugging down caffeine and eating at the same time. What did I just tell you about the blood and the function? It's going away from your digestive organs. You're just going to process it through. It's just going to whoop, go right on out. Okay, so you have to make sure you're taking time for yourself and don't put terrible things in your body. And so there's a couple of things that I always talk about with all of my patients on things to avoid. And I don't care if you have a sensitivity or an allergy or whatever to them. 
whether you do or not, this is still something that you need to abide by. No dairy, zero, zilch, no dairy, no cheese, no cow's milk, no sour cream, no creamer, no pumpkin spice lattes at uh, Starbucks or wherever you get them at now, okay? No dairy, none, zero, zilch, no questions asked. Number one thing, avoid. Gluten. Gluten is not just a fad to avoid. Gluten is massively inflammatory. Not only is it linked to irritable bowel, it's linked to decrease in stomach capability, stomach acid. It's linked to autoimmune disease. It's linked to cancer. It's linked to leaky gut. Why on earth would you still want to consume something that's going to do so much harm to your body? And there are so many other options that are out there that are gluten-free or this will blow your mind. Don't eat freaking bread. Don't eat stuff that is going to contain gluten anyways. You don't even need to be gluten-free. Just eat real food. Eat meat, veggies, chicken, fish, fruits. None of those contain gluten. They're all gluten-free. All right? Eat healthy, good quality food, and it will serve you. Okay? Super easy. Super, super easy to avoid. Next one is going to be soy. No soy milk. No soy, no soybeans, nothing with soy, no soy lecithin, high in inflammatory rates. Plus, it has a history of increasing your estrogens. Not a good day for you. It's inflammatory. We'll just leave it at that. So soy is going to cause inflammation in the body. So cut out the soy milk. If you're thinking that's healthy for you, stop it. Um, if you're a vegan and you're trying to pound down soy, don't do it. It's going to be uh, it's going to be very unhealthy for you, and you're going to pay for it for the, further down the line. So find other options. There's plenty of other options to get um, you know your protein and things in there if you're using soy or tofu for your main protein source. Okay, diversify a little bit. Go after your beans if you're vegan. The other one's going to be corn. So corn, not even t- I'm talking popcorn. I'm talking ear- ears of corn. Corn. Corn is pretty much all GMO across the board. It's very inflammatory, which is why a lot of times you eat corn and you'll see corn in your stool. All right, Your body can't really break it down, so don't eat it. It's inflammatory. Stop it. Cut it out. Now, this can be tough going into the holidays. Maybe for Thanksgiving, you, know, you guys do corn, but if you're trying to avoid irritable bowel, there's going to be strategies that I'm going to tell you at the end on what you can and can't have that will help you throughout this entire time. Okay? No artificial anything, no artificial sweeteners, no Splenda, no sugar freeze. If you see sugar free written on something, run away or throw it away. Uh, it's massively inflammatory. And they found that uh, I think it was 24 consistent days of using sucralose or artificial sweetener has decreased your stomach's pro- or your body's probiotics by about 50%. So it, whether that's pre-workouts, um, your protein powders, um, wherever, I don't even know where else anymore that you get sucralose just because so terrible for you just cut it out on top of that no food colorings no food additives no red dyes blue dyes yellow no caramel coloring none of that stuff again going to the spice lattes a lot of that contains caramel coloring all inflammatory all will hurt your gut if we're trying to help reverse irritable bowel cut it out okay just cut it and again we talked about this already just no junk food there's really no place for junk food in your body if you are you're on the run too much, then make sure you're making time to make meals or meal prep. There's meal services that you can use, um, like Trifecta and stuff that's out there. It's all over Facebook. Now that I said it on your Facebook, you'll probably get ads for it anyways. So watch for that. Now, number four. Now I am a chiropractor by training. So that guy right there is going to be your alignment, right? So alignment is going to be your spinal alignment. So if we're dealing with having uh, uh, scoliosis or subluxation where bone section or curve has shifted away from normal alignment, that is going to put stress in that area. That stress is going to decrease function or turn it down like a dimmer switch on a wall, decreases function out that nerve, and then that organ cell or tissue will progressively weaken, degenerate, and become diseased. Hence, irritable bowel. Right? So if we have poor spinal alignment, we have to make sure we're getting adjusted, whether that's getting adjusted by me or by your local chiropractor. You need to make sure you're getting those bones moved back into the right direction. Um, So that way you're taking off that spinal pressure. And then on top of that, it's proven that adjustments, especially to the atlas, the top neck bone, 
do a phenomenal job of reducing overall stress felt on the body. So it actually calms down the vagus nerve and lets things kind of rest and digest again. That's why a lot of times when I adjust people and it's the first time, they get really sleepy afterwards. They just want to go and take a nap. And I tell them that. I'm like, listen, your body might shut down. And if it does, that's great. It means your body was so stressed out or so tired before, but you just kept pushing it. And then I finally adjust you, boom, and it's like hitting the reset button. Okay, you're doing an update on your computer, which I had like 15 notifications to update my computer this morning. Same thing. We're upgrading your body to have proper healing. Okay, so alignment is huge. Absolutely huge. And then number five, problems with the microbiome. So this is basically going to be sprinkled all the way throughout here on all of the topics that we talked about. All of these things can affect our microbiome. So whether we have had stress in our life, whether we have subluxations in our spine, poor sleep, poor diet, okay, all of these things can cause problems in our microbiome. Whether we've had just one round of antibiotics, okay, I find it hard pressed to find somebody that's made it through this year without being threatened with antibiotics with everything that's going on out there. All of these things can disrupt the microbiome. If we disrupt the microbiome, ultimately irritable bowel is symptomatically located in the gut, problems with the microbiome, problems with the irritable bowel. So putting this through here, number one, two, three, four, five here. We have stress, we have sleep, we have diet, we have alignment, we have problems with the microbiome. I'm looking down here because I have them, my secondary screen right here. So that is going to be your main areas of focus when we're trying to work with irritable bowel, when we're trying to reverse irritable bowel. So for stress, get rid of the stress in your life as best you can. I know the holidays are coming up. Don't overspend your budget if you have one. Cut out negative people. If you don't want to spend time with family because they stress you out, then don't spend time with the family because they stress you out. Your health is more important than your obligations. It's actually a really good quote. Your health is more important than your obligations. I might write that down, okay? Sleep, make sure you're getting in bed by 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Diet, make sure you're doing an anti-inflammatory diet. Uh, if you need help going in and building one, uh, we have the Well World app. So if you just direct message me, we can get you programmed into the Well World app. It's free to use. Um, and we'll be able to construct a diet for you that's anti-inflammatory. It gives you a shopping list, diets, recipes, etc. cetera. Uh, kind of takes out all the guesswork for you. So if you need that as support, just reach out for me. Uh, alignment, so if you're getting adjusted again, whether for me or from somebody else in your area, do it and do it consistently. And then number five, problems with the microbiome, make sure you're doing things to soothe that. So now I'm gonna give you a little bit of free tips on things that I would suggest to implement into your diet, into your regimen, to try to help combat irritable bowel. Number one is gonna be fiber. A lot of people don't take fiber or they take terrible forms of fiber to try to get them to have bowel movements. So getting fiber in is shown to help with irritable bowel. It's shown to help with a microbiome, reduce your stress, and it helps to regulate your bowels. So using that is going to be beneficial for you, right? So make sure you're getting in the proper amount of fiber. Next thing is your simple stuff. Just throw in a probiotic. Doesn't have to be anything crazy. The only thing I suggest is whether it's for moss or somebody else, don't throw in a dairy-based probiotic because what did I tell you to do? Cut out all dairy. If your probiotic is dairy-based, you can still be causing inflammation through that probiotic. All right. Next one, we can have a mixture of two. So if you have irritable bowel and you're going more regularly where you're having more diarrhea, then Saccharomyces cerevisiae or Saccharomyces boulardii is a really good supplement to add in. It helps to solidify the bowel some. If you're on the opposite spectrum and you're more constipated, then magnesium citrate can really help to move the bowels along. All right, and then if you're kind of in between, there's a product that we have, it's called IB Synergy, which has a little bit of Florimyces in it or Sac Bilardi, and it helps to regulate the bowels, regulate the mood, so that way you're not over, over aggressive with your bowels and you're not overly constipated. So there's kind of a happy median in between there. Another one that's super, super awesome, um, I had a patient who's getting phenomenal results just with this one thing, just throwing in aloe vera juice, okay, just aloe vera. So drink the juice, not, uh, not anything terrible, not the gel, 
okay make sure it's organic we like to use lily of the desert we have some in the office but honestly you can get it anywhere um drink that drink like two shot glasses of that a day and i mean you can drink a whole bottle of that in a day you can uh, but it calms down inflammation in the bowels just like if you get a sunburn you put aloe on your skin same thing happens internally it's like an internal sunburn that you have and so you put the aloe in and it soothes everything on the way down it's a phenomenal thing to use very easy very cheap too and the last thing is going to be your adrenal adaptogens so if you are stressed out we need to have help with getting you to adapt to the stress if you can't eliminate any of the things that we did previously then you're going to be pretty stressed out you're going to be in a pretty rough state so we have to make sure we're taking care of your body and taking care of yourself okay and if all of those things that you tried do not work okay it's not that they won't work you'll feel better but if it's not a hundred percent then we got to test some things so what would i recommend we can do something as simple as a food sensitivity test or a food reaction test to see what foods your body reacts to we can do an adrenal panel okay something as simple as just doing a salivary adrenal which you can see there okay we use uh, we have like five different types of Genova is what we're using right now uh, we can do a GI map or a stool test figure out if you do have any sort of infections remember infections will cause irritable bowel infections will cause stress on the body so it's a full systems approach adrenals and then one of the other things too that I'm just gonna end this video with real quick is watch out for mold so if you have irritable bowel go down to your basement see if you have mold growing on the walls if you do Merry Christmas, get your house cleaned, <laughs> uh, and don't do it yourself. So what are my suggestions going into the holidays? Guys, if you have irritable bowel, remember your health, it does not need to be sacrificed for your obligations. Your health is more important than your obligations. So that means if you're going to visit family out of town, go to Whole Foods, go to a healthy store and, and stockpile on things that you can eat some dairy-free options, some healthy, maybe some kombucha to help with the gut. Maybe store some probiotics and bring them down with you. Okay, don't eat the things that are going to be inflammatory. What about milks? There's plenty of milk substitutes out there. There's your almond milk. They have oat milk. They have coconut milk that you can use. Um, so if you're doing like a mashed potato, use one of those instead. Um, butters, try to go for like a carry gold type butter. Or you can use, um, there's some vegan butters. Earth Balance has a really good one in the red tub that you can use. Um, but that's something that, again, it's an alternative that you can use. But you're, you have the right to be a snob whenever it comes to your health. You just have to know what you're doing. So packing these things or letting your, your family know, hey, this is what I'm doing for the holidays. Because, listen, I may have been internally struggling with digestive complaints for years. Now it's time for me to take a stand for myself. And I need you to be supportive of my health decisions so that way I can get better not just for myself but for my family right and this isn't a fad this is something that really people should be eating this way even if you have irritable bowel or not you should still be eating this way because we should be eating to fuel our bodies we shouldn't be eating to destroy our bodies just because it tastes good and the more we have those bad things the more addictive that behavior becomes and we have food addictions that come from having poor health decisions so snap out of those habits Try to have an awesome Thanksgiving, awesome holiday. Reduce the stresses. If you have questions or concerns, reach out, direct message me. I'd love to be able to answer any questions um, that you have. And I'm seeing here, Lindsay, the app. Um, so, Lindsay, if you want, um, direct message us on here. Uh, it's called the Well World app, but you have to have a practitioner create the account for you. So if you just um, send us your email and direct message, I'll have Cynthia put you into the Well World app, um, and then I can populate the, the diet that I would need for you just to be anti-inflammatory through the holidays, um, and then that way it's kind of foolproof for you. So yeah, so any other questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, this video, please like it and share it. Stuff, again, irritable bowel is something that's so near and dear again to my heart, but I see so many patients struggling with this on a daily basis, and no other doctor is going to talk about this. No medical doctor is going to talk about this. If you go to a medical doctor and say, hey, I'm going gluten-free, they're going to think that you're you know, crazy or you lost your mind. Or I'm going to cut out dairy. They're like, where are you going to get your calcium from? Uh, maybe vegetables. So if you need help or you need a support system, reach out here or build a new tribe around you of people who either are healthy or people who want to be healthy. I was just listening to um, a training this morning from Chris Harder, actually. That's a phenomenal training, uh, phenomenal training. Listen to Chris Harder. He's got a podcast um, 
for the love of money. It's it's a phenomenal podcast. But he was talking about mindset, where in his in his training he was talking about how if we surround ourselves with um, you know non successful or unsuccessful people, we're more than likely going to become unsuccessful. But same thing comes with health. If we surround ourselves by sick, miserable people, we too are also going to become sick, miserable people. So what we need to do is find a new tribe, find people who want to either go on this journey or who have been on this journey and use them as a role model and bounce ideas off them. So that way you have this new healthy tribe that you can go to gatherings. You can go to bonfires with this group of people and you know that you're going to show up and they're going to have the best healthy food that's out there, you can experiment with recipes and it's really truly about having a healthy community around you. So I talked way more than I thought I was going to on this topic, but uh, I love you guys, have a phenomenal weekend. I'm gonna get going here so that way we can continue on with our weekend and uh, see you next time.